<sighs> let it go. Maybe letting out a nice big sigh. And taking some of the deepest and fullest breath of the day. Using your nose and working to clear the mind, emptying your mind. That can be a long, arduous task, but doing our best to empty our mind. Connecting with the present moment. Connecting with the room around you or the space around you. Noticing colors, textures, fragrances, air quality. Just noticing. We'll stay a little bit longer here, enjoying this peaceful moment before movement. Settle through those seat bones and lift the crown of the head, raise up a little bit taller. Relax the shoulders down your back. And finally, we can set an intention for class if you choose to, something positive to focus on, healing that you're working towards. A few more big breaths. Rooting down and rising up. And we can bring our hands to prayer to just seal this moment in, seal your intention in, a little bow of the head, closing this thought. Awesome, beautiful. We'll slowly wake ourselves up. We'll just grab hold of your knees. We're going to do some seated cat cows. Exhale, fall and collapse back like a hammock. Let the head drop. Take a few breaths. And then we'll inhale, pull forward. Slowly lift the chin. It might feel good to kind of take the head from side to side, getting some cricks and cracks out through the neck joint. Oh, your neck's not a joint, sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the neck bone, the connective tissue, just kind of opening up through the neck and shoulders. Exhale, fall back, hammock, and drop your head. Inhale forward. We'll do that a third time if you want to go slowly. And if you want to do it a couple more times, there's time for doing it faster. Whatever floats your boat today. And when you're ready, just collapsing back for that last one. And 
and forward for our last one, or maybe we're doing multiples. Awesome, back to neutral. So take your spine so that it aligns on top of itself. Feel the seat bones root, lift the crown of the head. Nice, tall, tall, tall. And we'll take a twist one way and then the other way. Doesn't matter which way you wanna do first. One arm goes behind you, gazing over that shoulder. Gentle twist through the upper back, the shoulders. And change sides when you're ready. And inhale to center. Awesome. Big breath in and out. And we're going to extend one leg long for head to knee pose. I like to use a pillow under my heel. Aim your belly button over that straight leg. And we're going to inhale, reach your arms up. You can take your fingertips kind of past the ears, elbows bent, and then reach up. And then exhale, reach down. We'll do that um, three times, super duper slow, or maybe do several times here. Inhaling, reaching the arms up. Exhaling, folding. Maybe this deserves more than three, even folding it long so maybe we'll go to five or seven of these and go at your own pace if you want to do more than that or less inhaling reaching up see if you can keep a nice long neck exhaling long spine over that leg so lead with your heart not the top of your head or your forehead and here reach the arm up if you're doing it with me here <laughs> Exhale and folding. Maybe eventually, as we loosen up here, we're able to grab a foot. Maybe not. No problem. I will. Inhale, reach up. And exhale and folding, reaching. I'm going to do two more. Feel free to do more of us. Last one. Last one, then we'll find a neutral spine. Once again, come back to center. Find both of your seat bones. We're going to twist again, this time towards the bent leg. Inhale to center. We'll do that on the other side. Bringing your foot out, your other heel inwards, in your belly button over the long leg. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, hinge and reach. And once again, go at your own pace. Holding both postures for as little or as long as you'd like. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, folding forward. I'm going to do two more. And back to neutral whenever you're ready. Coming back, finding both seat bones, tall spine, and then we'll twist towards the bent knee. And 
And inhale back to center. Big breath in and out. Okay, we'll bring the soles of our feet together, knees apart. We'll take a bound angle. Sorry if that was loud into the microphone. Um, and we're just going to bounce our knees a few times, holding onto those feet, trying our best to lift our heart up, and just getting those hips a little bit loose, a little bit open. If you want to take a hold, by all means, be my guest. I'm just going to bounce for now. A little constant motion and the rhythm, I think, is I find really soothing. Okay, so we can stop bouncing, and if you're folding forward, lift yourself back up. And we're just going to extend one arm out to the side, kind of reach those fingertips away from you, and then tip your head away from the fingers. Just getting a nice big stretch through the side of your neck, the shoulder area a little bit. And you can drop your chin down and up a few times. And kind of find the angle that feels best in your body. And then we'll go to the other side when you're ready, just reaching those fingertips away from you. And then taking your head away from that arm, dropping one ear to the opposite shoulder of the extended arm. And then maybe taking the chin down and up a few times. Wonderful. Back to center. Let's make our way into child's pose. We'll take a nice child's pose for several breaths before we enter our first down dog or tabletop, whatever you're doing today. Taking our head down and just melting into the floor. Uh, let it go. Release tension and stress and even worries if you can. Feel that pressure of the ground or the floor up against your forehead. And see if you could just empty tension. Maybe you furrow your brow in <laughs> deep thought and just release that wrinkled tension at the center of your forehead. You can even kind of shake your head from side to side, letting that pressure massage the skin there, the really that thin skin. A few more breaths here. You guys are doing awesome. Keep up the great work. So maybe we're doing tabletop today or child's pose, I'm sorry, or a downward facing dog. So whichever one you wanna do, you could come to tabletop and stretch out the wrists this way, maybe doing some cat cows, or you could come to down dog and really stretch out the backs of the legs, get an inversion with our hips higher than our head. I'm just breathing, letting it go. Finding some motion, some movement, lifting up and down on the toes and down dog, maybe bending and straightening one leg and then the other, no matter what position you find yourself in. And we'll step forward to the front of our mat. Inhale, halfway lift, press the leg bones away from you. Lift your belly button up towards the ceiling and or the sky. <laughs> Exhale, fold forward. Let the head and arms get nice and heavy. Shake the head, yes and no. Let out a nice big sigh. 
Open and close the jaw. And then we'll bend the knees, reach the arms up, look up, upward salute. Exhale the hands through to prayer, steady standing. So just find a nice steady stance. Notice the blood rushing to the head, perhaps, and just breathe through it for a moment, getting steady in your feet, getting steady in your gaze. All right, we're gonna take our feet hip width apart, if not a little bit wider, and make sure those knees are kind of buoyant and they're not locked tight, but there's a, a little bit of give. Pull your belly button back. So we wanna keep a nice, strong core for this exercise that we're about to do. You're gonna take your arms out. Um, I can't, I don't quite have space in this one. Um, and you can also take your arms like, Feel goal posts if you need space or if you even just can feel kind of good this way. So like this or arm straight. And we're just gonna inhale, twist to the left. Exhale, twist to the right. You can actually, you can take your hands and fists and kind of put them in front of you like this. This is how I do it. <laughs> now that I'm doing it with you. <laughs> So it's gonna be a really quick motion. It's gonna be like a swish, 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 swish. And you're gonna inhale left, exhale right. And what happens is the you'll notice the lungs actually expanding and contracting, contracting. You'll really tune into that. And you just keep a nice strong core. And you'll notice that it really opens up your chest cavity, the upper back, your shoulders, and the, the momentum is definitely going to create a pretty deep twist in your spine. So it's super important that you keep your belly and core engaged, nice and strong, nice strong legs. But we'll do this for several more breaths. You might start to cramp up. That's totally normal. That happens to me all the time when I do this, <laughs> unfortunately. Exhale. And see if you can kind of notice the left side of your chest expanding with breath and then the right side doing the opposite. And it almost begins to become involuntary. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> You're probably getting tired. <laughs> Let the arms kind of collapse. You can kind of slowly shake it out. So do a little bit of the washing machine to slowly fade out of that exercise. Okay, and then we'll come back to downward facing dog. When you're ready, we'll make our way through a vinyasa to a child's pose or simply taking tabletop and child's pose, whatever support you need today. Inhale, high plank pose from down dog. Exhale, chaturanga hit the deck. Inhale, lift your heart up nice and tall. And child's pose, we'll all meet in child's pose. Awesome job. Give our back a little bit of a break here. I'm doing knees together. This time, knees together, arms forward, whatever works for you, your favorite version. Take a few cleansing breaths here to just reset, regroup. Okay, and we'll come back to downward facing dog when you're ready or tabletop. Stretching it out. 
and step forward to the front of your mat when you're ready. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Let your head and arms be heavy. Release tension. Let go. Bend the knees. Reach the arms up. Look up. Upward salute. Exhale the hands through to prayer. Steady standing. Awesome. Take a moment in mountain pose. Adjust. And for our next pose, you may want a a block or some type of support. We're going to do triangle pose. <laughs> but we're going to start in a wide leg straddle position. So like, not definitely not hip width, but maybe like a foot past hip width or even a little bit wider. And you can take your block or your support and just put it behind one of, I have it behind my right leg. And we'll just settle into our straddle here. Once again, belly back, tailbone down. And we're going to interlace our fingers behind our back. We'll lift those hands up and away. Really big stretch through the chest and shoulders, looking up. Oh, I got a cough out. That felt good. And gently release your arms. Both of our toes are pointed forward right now. I'm taking my right toes or whichever, whichever leg you want to do first and take the one set of toes to face the opposite direction. So per perpendicular. One foot is perpendicular to the other. And then see if you can keep squaring your hips off so that there are two headlights pointed towards the um, toes that are Point it towards the long edge of your mat if you're using a mat. <laughs> All right, we're going to do triangle pose. So it's simply just taking the crook of your hip of the toes that are pointed forward and just kind of tucking it in. And your support comes in here when you reach behind you to your support. And even on my fingertips, on my support, you want it to be a little bit higher up for this posture. And you can take your hand to your hip. Or you could also reach your hand up high towards the ceiling or the sky. And we're in Trikonasana, triangle pose. And if you feel like you can give in a little bit, taking the hand to the ankle or the floor, that's an option. But just notice how your torso shifts and changes. Notice how the hips might kind of uh, crease more and rotate. So the goal here is to kind of keep our hips open and just notice any changes you might be experiencing if you adjust. And you might want to look down at that front foot for a moment. Okay, we're going to bend that right knee. Take your, or the front knee, take your hand to your hip that was raised and just kind of catch your breath here. Find some stability. We're actually going to kick up into half moon. So we'll take our support a little bit further forward and launch yourself off of that back foot. And you can kind of hover in a warrior three with your hands down, your hips square, or you can really go for that half moon and pick your hip up high, taking your hand to your hip. So hips are kind of stacked and the hips are open just like they were in Trikonasana Triangle. And you can also take your arm up and just kind of become this really big expansive star for half moon. It's just this like really big opening. Not easy either, you got this. Hopefully you have a support nearby. Okay, to come out, we're just going to exhale, collapse into a forward fold. Let that leg come down. Let the head be heavy. Ooh, let it go. Awesome. Catch your breath. Slow down a little bit before we do the other leg.
Okay, we'll bend the knees, reach the arms up, look up. Exhale the hands through to prayer, steady standing, Stasana. Okay, we'll take a wide straddle stance. This time we'll do that on our other leg. Have a support nearby. I do recommend it if you've got it. And take it behind your other leg now. I've got it behind my left leg. Find a nice strong straddle stance. All righty. We'll interlace our fingers behind our back the weird way. Add thumb and first finger on top and then pull and lift. Strong belly. Exhale, release. Take your left toes towards the front of your mat. Square those hips off. So the heel of one foot lines up with the lines up with the arch of the other foot. It's perpendicular. Try and get your hips pointed square. And then we'll tuck that hip in for our triangle pose. Tucking at that hip, folding and reaching for your support. I'm even up on my fingertips on support. I could, I could use a chair for this posture. That's how high up we can potentially actually lift that hip that's, that's stacked up. I know the tendency is to just kind of reach and fold and get that big expression in, but I like to focus on the alignment, so don't be afraid to be really far away from the floor. You could even take your hand to your thigh. Just don't put it on your knee. And we can take that arm up. Big inhale. Big exhale, awesome. Okay, here's the tricky part. We'll just bend that front knee let that arm relax. You can take both hands to your leg. Just kind of catch a breath here. And this is when we'll kick off into half moon on the other leg. You can take your supports forward. I have this handy dandy windowsill that I'm going to use. So you just launch off of your back leg and you could hang out with your hip square. This is warrior three, or you can lift that hip up and come into this half moon pose where our hips are stacked and open. Maybe even taking your arm up. Being nearby a wall is super helpful for this pose. You can maybe try it again when you have more support. All righty, we'll exhale and just kind of collapse into our forward fold. Both legs come down and we fold and melt. Let the head be heavy. Take a few deep breaths, reach those arms forward. Maybe we can catch the floor with our fingertips. Okay, bend the knees, reach the arms up, look up, upward salute. Exhale your hands through to prayer, steady standing. Tadasana. We're going to take straddle stance once again. Big straddle stance, maybe even a little bit wider now that we're more open. And we're going to interlace our fingers behind our back whichever way of lacing you prefer. And we're gonna lift our hands up. This time, if you would like, take a little fold forward. If you have a support nearby, actually, you might be able to find your head on the top of the support, which is a fun way to practice this. But we'll take our hands, lift them up and fold forward if you wish, or just hang out with your hands folded like we did earlier. And you might be able to find your head on the top of a chair or a stool. And just hang out. Notice that the density of your arms kind of get carried further and further away from your back. 
And if we can let gravity take control, we can loosen up those shoulders. Big breathing. And whenever you're ready, exhale, release your hands to the floor. And if you're not folded forward, just release your hands. Take a moment. Maybe you want to take a little fold forward if you haven't done that yet. Maybe without your arms behind your back. It may feel good for us to just kind of bend one knee and then the other knee kind of going from side to side. And just enjoying this forward fold for a few more breaths. Maybe some of us can get our head to the floor. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, to come out of this, we'll slowly roll ourselves up and heel toe the feet together at the same time. So just kind of coming out. <laughs> heel toe, heel toe, a nice way of opening up the toes. Take a moment in Sama, Sama Stiti. Feeling it out, feeling our spine adjust to being stacked, lifting a little bit taller, pulling that belly button back and lifting the crown of the head. All right, my friends, let's take down dog and make our way back down to the floor. Downward facing dog. Big inhale and exhale. Press the shoulders towards your feet. Inhale, high plank pose. Exhale, slowly lower, hit the deck. Inhale, lift your heart up. Cobra. Exhale, come back down all the way to the floor. Take your chest down and take your forehead to the floor. Engage your arms by pressing your hands down into the floor. Feel those back muscles wake up a little bit. And then just wiggle your legs until they're comfortable. They might, your feet might end up hip width apart. Big breath in and out. All right, we're going to interlace our fingers behind our back. And we're going to lift our chest and feet and legs up for locust pose, Shalabhasana. So exhale, really good. Inhale, lift up. Locust pose. Just lifting up and away from the floor. Squeeze the feet together now that we're lifted. Squeeze your glutes, your booty. And exhale, release. Take a cheek, relax your shoulders, your arms, and simply breathe in and out a few times. Constantly breathing, of course, never stopping. Take your other cheek to the floor. And we're going to take Sphinx Pose. So come on to your elbows. And press down through both legs. Lift your heart. Connect with your breath. I love grounding my breath here. So letting that belly expand on the inhale, you get that grounding sensation from the connection of your belly to the earth or the floor.
We're going to support ourselves with our right arm, whichever leg you want to do first. Support yourself with a parallel forearm to the front edge of your mat. Bend your opposite leg. And then you can reach behind with the same hand to grab that foot. And gently press down on your ankle towards the floor, melt towards the floor here. Let's take three more breaths. Exhale, release. We'll take the other leg, whichever side you didn't do last time. You kind of use your arm as a kickstand. Bend your foot and grab it. Press down. Not only does this stretch our quad, the front of our thigh, but also our shoulder and chest a little bit. See if you can keep that belly grounding with the inhales into the floor. And big inhale, exhale, release. Take sphinx pose. Elbows under the shoulders, a few breaths here, just a few more. Exhale, big inhale. And we'll exhale into an awesome child's pose to really rest our back now. You can bring the knees together. That might feel really helpful at this point of our practice. Let the head get heavy. You can take your hands towards the feet. And we'll just hold a really wonderful, gentle child's pose for several breaths. Beginning to slow things down. Staying a little bit longer. It may feel nice to kind of rock from side to side. Let's take three more breaths, nice and steady. And we'll slowly sit up into hero's pose, sitting back on those heels. And I'm just gonna put a blanket in front of me we're going to do down dog to pigeon. So if you're skipping down dog, you can do tabletop and then just send your leg back and bring that knee forward like so to settle in to pigeon. Or you can join me and do downward facing dog, three legged dog, and tuck that knee in for pigeon pose. So two options, both are great. Maybe lifting up for a really big down dog, walking it out, second to last one of these. Inhale, lift whichever leg you want, nice and high, three-legged dog. And then we'll take pigeon. So hug that knee up and in, and then settle onto that hip for pigeon pose. I like to press the floor away from me, get that really big front body stretch. Check that my back leg is actually in a straight line from toe to hip and then take it down. Supporting your head on your arms and just letting go. Letting go. 
or whatever you're holding on to. Let the hips melt towards the floor. Feel that space opening up. Treat your muscles like a stick of butter that you want to melt with your breath. We'll stay for five or seven more breaths here. Just five or seven more, nice and steady. And we'll slowly lift ourselves up out of pigeon. Lifting our heart up, pressing the floor away. And we can really press the floor away for an added stretch through the front of the hip crease of that leg that's behind you. Really big stretch when you do that, when you really push the floor away. So we'll come back to down dog or to tabletop, whichever you're opting for. Maybe both. <laughs> Maybe we kind of wiggle our hips from side to side in tabletop and or down dog. Kind of get those hips nice and deep in sockets. Press the heels down, lift the belly button up if we're in down dog. And then pick that heel nice and high, three-legged dog, or simply push the foot away in table. And then hug your knee in for pigeon. Walk it down. Press that floor away from you. Make sure that toe, knee, and hip are in a straight line. Exhale, fold, let go. Let your head be supported. Let the breath flow and let it go. We'll stay here for almost two minutes. So really melting, letting go, letting the breath flow. I guess I can't say it enough. Let go and let it flow. Keep it moving. The only thing moving is the breath, but keeping it moving. Cleansing breath in and out. And we'll stay for five to seven more breaths. Steady, rhythmic, slow, long.
And to come out of it, we lift our heart and press the floor away, getting that added stretch through the hip flexor. And then we can come to tabletop to kind of swivel those hips around, going one way, the other way, back and forth, making circles. Maybe you're up for one very last downward facing dog, just to stretch out the backs of the legs, suck that belly button up towards the ceiling for a strong supported spine. Awesome. And we'll make our way onto our back. So however you want to get there, just dropping my knees, setting up my pillow, and just coming all the way onto your back. If you have your support, we'll do supported bridge um, or simply bridge. So taking it all the way down, feet on the floor, knees up. It just at first here, enjoy the support of the floor. We've been holding ourselves nice and strong, holding ourselves up all day. So just let the floor take that on. Enjoy the firmness of the floor or the ground outside. And just stay for a few breaths here. I kind of like to just rock slightly and it kind of massages your tailbone and the low back a little bit as you just kind of earth and ground into this last stage of class. <sighs> big breath in, big breath out. So we could do bridge and hold it for just a moment. Just lifting those hips up. You can interlace your fingers behind your back. And just try and get the hips high, the shoulders together. And then exhale, release when you're ready. Hug your knees into your chest. Rock from side to side. And we all are in different situations at home. So I don't know if you have a block for supported bridge. We can use that. Or you could send both legs up to just hang out with our legs up. Um, either on a wall or not, or your feet are on your floor knees up, slide that support as far low on your back as you can get it for supported bridge. Whatever pose you find yourself in, just make it so that you're comfortable and sustainable. If there's a favorite posture you want to do, of course, that's fine. Just something that's grounding and makes you feel safe and protected. It's a restorative posture and we'll be here for a few minutes. So we do want it to be comfortable and safe and supportive. So I'm in supported bridge. However, your legs could be up. Maybe you take reclining bound angle, soles of the feet together, knees apart on your back. That's always an awesome one. So whatever works for you today, whatever floats your boat. As you get more and more comfortable, as you become more and more still, Settle in and let go more and more and more.
we'll stay a little bit longer. Letting the breath simply flow in and out. Just nice and naturally, not forcing it or controlling it to do anything. Notice your belly rising and falling with breath. You can even take your hands to your belly to, to actually feel that happening. It's hard to come out of that one, <laughs> but we get to make our way into Shavasana. So if you want to stay, you can stay by all means, or we very slowly move our body, do what feels right in your body to come out and enter Shavasana. Take your time here to do what feels comfortable, what feels right. I'll just guide us through our shavasana, first pose so as you settle in. Please a for a brow if you have one. Relax the skin of your face. Let your joints and limbs get really useless and heavy. Enjoying the space that you're in, taking in your surroundings. Color, light, texture, patterns, movements, shadows, fragrances. Just taking it all in. And slowly closing your eyes when you're ready for a wonderful, Restful Shavasana, last pose of class. Let your body feel really dense and heavy. Let your bones melt towards the ground or the floor. Let your skin begin to feel heavy. Feel the, the metal in your blood, the density of the body. and let the floor or the ground support you completely. Like a heavy object on a shelf. And now begin to sense how light you are. Notice all the air in your body, the lightness of your bones and your skin and your blood. And let yourself kind of float, begin to feel that floating sensation, a sort of a weightlessness as the world holds you up. Now feel yourself as completely whole, whole and complete. 
and balance those two sensations together. Harmonizing those two extreme sensations of density and buoyancy, of weight and weightlessness. And see if you can feel those two things at the same time. Maybe we even focus on the center of our forehead behind the mind's eye, waking up sight in darkness. Begin to deepen your breath. the fingers and the toes. Draw your head from side to side. And roll to the sleeping position, preferably on the right side of your body so that our heart is lifted. And we're not putting pressure on the heart. If you are feeling well and good, hold that close to you. And hopefully we can carry it with us throughout our week. And we'll slowly come to a seated posture whenever you're ready, taking your time. Find a tall spine before we close here. Notice how we feel, notice how the breath flows. And as we bring our hands to prayer, reminding ourselves of any intentions we set or any healing goals that we made, focusing on healing body, mind, and soul. I'm going to own, feel free to join me. Big inhale. Bowing our heads in gratitude. Namaste.